Gertrude Elizabeth Margaret Anscombe, often referred to as G.E.M. or Elizabeth Anscombe, was a British philosopher famous for her work on intention and action theory and for revitalizing the idea of virtue ethics and morality. Born to British parents in Limerick, Ireland in March of 1919, she grew up in Britain and went to school during the economic recession caused partly by America's Great Depression and continued her education through World War II and the fight for equal rights and places in society for women. Anscombe is largely credited with the modern revival of virtue ethics and morality. Originating from Aristotle's teachings, virtue ethics is a focus on identifying and living by virtues in order to be a virtuous person, rather than by merely following a set of rules. In virtue ethics, simply being a virtuous person is what leads one to perform good moral actions. In supporting this theory, Anscombe investigated topics such as action and desire, happiness as pleasure versus fulfillment, and most famously intention, all of which are pillars that moral philosophy as a whole stands on. Her work in these topics is largely responsible for bringing virtue ethics back into the mainstream of philosophical debate. As part of her advocacy for virtue ethics, she also supported the elimination of the moral obligation school of thought. She argued that the obligation part of the belief was too outdated and only applied when it was connected to God and religion, which philosophers of ethics tried to distance their ideas from. Anscombe wanted to replace this method of thinking with one that centralized virtues leading to ethics and the philosophy of psychology. A modern interlocutor can take away three practical impressions from Anscombe's works. Firstly, on the nature of happiness. What is it really, and how is it achievable? Is it pleasure or fulfillment? Which is more valuable to us, and which have we chosen more often? In deciding answers to these questions, we can apply them to our lives to live more according to our ideals. Secondly, we can focus more on living specific, concrete virtues rather than adhering to rule books of behavior. By adhering to virtues, good actions will naturally follow, as opposed to codes of conduct which can be manipulated and twisted. Thirdly, we can think more critically about justifications and reasons for actions. Do the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few? Do the ends justify the means? These questions can help us evaluate the ethics of the beliefs and decisions of ourselves and others.